Divine Truth Name of this presentation is The Loving Use of Mediumship and is part of the Spirit Relationship Series. It was presented in Kentucky, New South Wales, Australia on the 12th of April 2012. This is Session 2, Part 1. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to involve you guys a bit tonight, particularly in the beginning of our discussion, so that if we could use a microphone so that we can record it. So you've got one up the back there, and we'll have a microphone down the front of you shortly. So I'm sort of flicking in and out, aren't I? Mm -hmm. So we might just need to change our um, frequency first. And there's... <laughs> So cosy with the fire, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want to? I think it was a good option over the woolshed. Yeah. yeah. The woolshed would be pretty drafty tonight, wouldn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> but we'll miss the sheep for feedback because we always. Yeah. Susan told me you've got yeah. sheep for feedback. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, the possum. Rats and possums. Possibly you'll have some other feedback tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the horses now. Yeah. The yeah. horses now. <laughs> Yeah. So who regularly comes to the mediumship nights here? Oh yeah, so just about everyone who doesn't regularly come. <laughs> That's your punishment. <laughs> That'll be better? Yep. Can everyone hear alright? Yeah, that's, yeah. Good. that's yep. good. That's good. Okay, sorry about that. Bit of technical stuff. <laughs> Just to get everybody in the gear. Um, <laughs> so how is everybody? It's our last day with you tonight, uh, then we head, head our way back home tomorrow, so um, we hope to enjoy our discussion with you this evening. Mm -hmm. We realise that uh, this is normally a mediumship evening, mm -hmm. and we will be discussing mediumship tonight in the entire evening, uh, but we will be discussing some things with you rather than um, focusing on the um, mediumship itself. Although our spirit friends do want to say a few things too. What's happened is myself and Mary have spent a little bit of time talking to our spirit friends about what's going on here with your mediumship group. But what we'd like to do first is to um, have a bit of a discussion with you and open up the discussion to yourself about a few subjects regarding your mediumship team meetings that you've been having. So we'd like to hear from you, in other words, about so, how you feel it's going and what you feel... All right. Okay. So, so what we'd like to do first is uh, have a discussion with you, and I've got some notes here that I made from our discussion with our spirit friends. So, we'll just see how we go with them. But what we'd like to do is just open so, sort of up to yourselves, those of you who've come along fairly regularly to the mediumship team here, to the meetings. I just wondered, we want to ask you some questions and, give, and get some feedback from you. So, so firstly, what do you feel are the common attractions that you have individually with the spirits that are coming to the mediumship meetings? Have you given that much thought? So what, what do you notice are the common types of spirits that are coming to speak with you? So if you take Angelo out of the, out of the equation, what are the common types of spirits coming to speak with you? Um, if we go to Rita. Spirits. Spirits, spirits who are earthbound. So all the spirits are earthbound? That's a common thing? A, a majority of them. Yep, good. Any, anyone else? Uh, Eloisa, next. Um, a lot of them are angry. So a lot of them are... Ang angry women. A lot of them are angry women. Yeah, um, and a lot of them want to help people, like they something happened to them on earth and they want to help them to sort of 
not experience what they experienced. Right, so they, the, they want to yeah. help the persons on Earth avoid the same kind of experience that they've been hurt with mm -hmm. on Earth. Mm -hmm. So could you say then that a lot of them are wounded women who are yeah. trying to help other women on Earth and, and, and not experience the same things that they've experienced? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I'm talking about two different things because some of the, there's some men as well okay, um, so who what, are wounded doing the same thing. Okay, so there's also wounded men doing the same yeah, thing? Yeah, but generally the women are in a massive rage and just want a, women to continue with that. Right, and what are the men like? Um, okay, there's not so many men. It's, um, but we had some fishermen coming the other, other day. Yep. Um, they don't associate with women. Okay, so can you see there is sort of like a separation between yeah. the men and the women? Yeah. Do you also notice that happening in your group? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So uh, the other day Mary had a book study, the, the book study group, and you could almost draw a line down the middle and on one side were the men and on the other side were the women, wow. which was an interesting uh, thing that she observed in that group. So yes, so let's continue. What, what else have you noticed uh, about the spirits that have come? Any, any ideas there? Alexis? Um, just to spin off with... Um, Eloisa. 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 <laughs> yeah. um, that the men seem to be um, kind of um, wanting to repair their status. Um, like, how to say, it's not so much to protect people, but like to help people. Um, yeah, so the, the intention is a little bit different. Yeah. So why they, they're coming. Whereas the women are like kind of like, I got to guard, you know, I got to guard the other women against this horrible thing. Whereas the men are kind of almost looking for approval or mm -hmm. kind of to reestablish their status. Type. So they're a bit need, more needy for approval or... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> yep. mm -hmm. And do the men in the group see a similarity there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew, thanks. Oh, no, I was just saying yes. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> just saying yes, though, right? <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Anything else that you've noticed? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Sue? Yes, I just noticed that we're often attracting spirits that there's a common thread of law of attraction. Yep. Yep. Um, with our own injuries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a good thing to observe, Rita. Oh. Uh, um, I just want to say I'm really sad if that um, because I really like it. Yes. And I would be very sad if it is criticised, because I get a lot out of it. Yeah, okay. Um, and I have just different opinions since, than you, yep. <laughs> maybe. Well, we will talk about this in but, a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Rita, I'm not saying that it's going to stop, by the, the way. The purpose of our discussion is not to criticise the group at all. Yeah. It's to help you guys deepen your understanding of mediumship. Of what has actually happening. But to deepen your own self-reflection yeah. and to develop sincere desires surrounding service and love of one another. Yeah, I just was saying just a beginner with all that and even some King Arai ones, I really like it too, even so I didn't I never sat into chair or anything, but it's just um, a beginning. Yeah, but what you're also expressing, uh, which, we're, which I want to ask everyone about, is how your addictions are being met by the mediumship night. So, so I feel this is one of the addictions that you're getting met by the mediumship diet. If, if the mediumship night was taken away from you, how would many of you feel? Can you, uh, have you thought about that? What, what, what are the feelings? So you've expressed how you would feel, Rita. How would you feel, Dave? <clears throat> yeah, I'd feel disappointed. Yeah. Uh, but I was more wanting to comment on an observation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's gone now. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, that's right. Um, there seems to be some addictions at play, um, particularly wanting personal information, which I'm guilty of that too. Right. Um, yeah. Particularly from Angelo. Yeah. Um, other observations. So when you say you want personal information, it's like they're like. Feed me, feed me with what I need to work on. Tell me what I need to have. What, what, what's wrong with my life and all this kind of stuff? You yep. feel that yes. coming? Yep. 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 Uh, and, and at times it's, we're seemingly unaware uh, until till Peter points it out that um, that we've been influenced by not so much influenced, but the um, the room gets very heavy at times because yes. we're not owning our stuff. Yes. So there's a, almost an avoidance of your own emotion while the mediumship is actually happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say that's that's a, a 
uh, yeah, key point actually. Yep. Okay. So then, if, can we ask the question generally of everyone? How do you feel your attitude is towards the spirits who come? So you've talked about the types of spirits who come. What's the general feeling amongst the group towards the spirits and towards each other while the group's happening? What, what do you find there, Matt? Matthew? I don't really feel that there's much in the whole group and myself as well, much of a genuine desire to serve them, to be honest. So when, when you say there's not much of a genuine desire to serve them, let's be more specific. How, how does that... What is there? What is, what is the feeling that you have when they come. So how many of you, when, when some of these women come, how many of you agree with them? Have you noticed how many of you agree with them? I'm frightened. You're frightened of them, yeah? yeah. So, so when you're afraid, can you love? No. No, so that, that's obviously... But, but uh, one thing I've noticed is many of you agree with them, to be frank. And sometimes, um, sometimes it's tempting to say we're loving them but we're avoiding the truth with them, and so that means we're not loving them, we just want to commiserate with them mm -hmm. at times. Yeah. We say we're having compassion and love for them, but when we have true love for people, we will serve them by telling them the truth, because that's going to assist them the most. So often, um, if you reflect about when women's spirits come, how firm are you all for truth with those spirits? I don't want to discuss those things yet. Okay, sorry. Is that okay? Yep. Sorry, it's just what we've got, we're, our spirit friends have got a lot of things they want to discuss with you, and Mary started to discuss one of them. But I would like to know more from you guys. Like, mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to say exactly what you think. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like, um, what, we're not here to criticise anything. But what we want to do is we do want to get things into harmony with love, and and, uh, and and we want to explain to you how our spirit friends feel about what's going on. So, firstly, we'd like to know from you guys what do you feel is going on. And, uh, and then we can discuss what our spirit friends feel is going on and then we can talk to you about uh, two primary principles that we'd like to discuss. So, so please feel free to just uh, to say exactly what you feel, Laura. Um, I don't know if it's relevant, but it's not so much about the spirits, but everyone in the room apart from Pete who um, channels Angelo and Tig, um, none of us, I feel, um, feel a, a level of self-worth to channel any spirit above the earth bound, there's almost like this um, this heavy blanket that we all feel unworthy, like a, it's a kid, we all feel unworthy to yep. anyone to channel a high spirit. And when Angelo is channeled by Pete, what are your feelings then? What, what do you feel then? Have you noticed what you feel when you... So Matt, what were you going to express there? <laughs> the, the verbal... The, 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 uh, needy, needy, give me, give me. Okay, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's something I do notice, yep. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've noticed there's lots of fear about earth changes yep. um, and a lot of people want to ask what, what do we do, what can we do, what can we do to avoid you know, problems in earth changes. Okay, so, so, so fear about that, Peter? I notice with myself, people connect me with Angelo and think that I'm Angelo sometimes. And right. Like, <laughs> so they get mixed up as who's Peter and who's Angelo. Yeah. And what's the result of that, Pete? Um, well, they, they expect that they seem to think that I know all these things that are going on and yeah. that I'm doing all this. And, and I don't have a clue who their parents are or their grandmothers. Yeah, I don't know yeah. Who yeah. Okay. So there's sort of a, a, a sort of an expectation then upon upon you a bit to get information. Well, more of an expectation that I know all this stuff personally within myself. When you don't, I don't have a clue. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, David. Just two things. First of all, when you say about agreeing with the, the, the angry women spirits, yep. what did you mean by that? Um, I feel if uh, just something to think about, and this is something I'm putting to you as an idea, rather than me stating anything just yet about the issue. But uh, when a, a wounded woman comes along to the group, many of the wounds of that particular woman who comes to the group are very similar to the wounds in many of you women in the group. And so there is almost this tacit agreement to her fear of dealing with the issue in the group. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When the wounded man comes along to the group, mm -hmm. there are many men in the group with exactly the same wounds, mm -hmm. and you has a, have a tacit agreement almost that the man has the right to have that same wound that you have without there being any truth that you wish to share with the person about the fact that the wound is causing damage. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's something to consider both for the men and the women. 
in the group, yeah. not just for the women in the group. Okay, so no, not necessarily anything verbalised. Um, well, many times you do verbalise it in different things that I've heard uh, recorded and so forth. Yes, many right. times you do verbalise these agreements that you that you actually do have, but uh, but many times you're trying to convince the spirit to change when you yourself want to hold on to exactly the same thing the spirit wants to hold on to. And so, do you see how that's not going to be very effective in the long run in terms of helping that spirit? You, you see what I mean? Especially if you don't acknowledge that that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. And the second thing, um, probably not quite so much lately, but I, I noticed that um, Peter tends to get put up on a pedestal. Yeah. Um, particularly by the women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also feel there's frustration, like in, say, well, I've felt personally like if there's a woman up there, a woman spirit, and she's in this story, I feel frustrated. Like, is this story going to keep going? And I, got, I don't feel any love then because I'm frustrated about the topic. So you're, hearing, also you're feel, hearing the story rather than dealing with the emotions of the spirit. Yeah, because then I get to this point where I was like, well, it's not the spirit anymore. It's, you know, someone wanting glory or, you know, I'll get all these things going in my head. But then I also feel it happened with, with the opposite sex as well. So, yeah. like, when the man's up there, then... The women sort of have the. I, th I just that's what I've been feeling. Yeah. So when the when a woman's being channeled, the men often feel a bit like. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's me personally. You yeah. feel I, I got to go with what I'm feeling. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's best to go with what yeah. you feel. But yeah. when you said the reverse thing, does that mean when a man's being channeled? Yeah, I even get frustrated when okay. a man's getting channeled yeah. as well because yeah. I, I I feel like okay, so the start was getting there, now they just dropped out, and now it's the person, and there's this story going on again, and. And I don't really do the mini show, I just sit down to the desk. Yeah. I'm yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's what I've been yeah. feeling. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to put myself out there. Um, and admittedly, I've got a lot of injuries towards men, obviously. Um, and I do feel there's a bit of adulation towards Peter, but I also feel that there's very um, strong banding with the men and he tries to be very encouraging of the men to do channeling and yeah. particularly when they're in um, an injury where they're actually you can see they're they're channeling not not from a pure space so um, um, needy for approval attention and glory yeah, yeah whereas um sorry um <clears throat> I've, uh, I've been doing a bit of personal channeling yeah. with with a friend of mine as a guide yeah. which I won't discuss with anyone normally yeah. um, because it, the, the few times that I have it's like well you can't possibly be doing that yeah. um, so that 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 was my personal reflection um, and uh, I have had an, another woman come to the group and she, she won't come now because um, and that was Peter's feeling, but but um, she was shut down, and and that's okay. But it doesn't seem to be quite the same with the men. The men are allowed to go on and on with him. Right. Okay. So you feel that there is some disharmony in terms of equality between yeah, our. I, I feel I don't do. know anything about Peter personally, but yeah. I feel that he went to a possibly an all boys school, so he doesn't know how to relate to women and oh. and is scared of. <laughs> women um so he's used to banding together as one of the boys or something i don't i don't know so i'm i'm quite open to being injured yeah but you're very accurate about some assessment there <laughs> <laughs> and, and peter you're free to comment if you wish to comment is it but, um yep uh yeah i agree with some of that but um i also feel that there's there's some kind of it sometimes it's almost like there's a, a show like this, this, it's entertainment, and Peter's Peter's on the stage with the microphone, and maybe he feels um, a little bit uh, pressured yeah. to keep things going as sort of master of ceremonies or something. So he gets all the time to choose who's to come up and and so on. And when and you say he, this is where I feel you are getting very mixed up about who's choosing, mm -hmm. because the reality is that Angelo's. Choosing. choosing. Oh, yes, okay, so, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But I do feel that sometimes it's a little bit like um, a show and maybe he's feeling that sort of pressure to, keep, you know, keep the night rolling and so on. Um, but... 
also it's all it can, seems can to be. Can you see what's starting to happen now? Mm -hmm. What's starting to happen now? We're starting to criticise and. Yeah, this is this is there is one major thing you're starting to do now. What is it? Attack. Attack. Um, no, just just think about it a little. What are you what are you doing? What are the principles? What? what are the core principles of the divine love path? And not owning. But what what's the first what's the first door that needs to be opened? Humility. 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 Right. What is humility? Feeling your own. Right. So does anyone want to comment? Like Rita, what is humility? What do you feel? Humility is to be able to feel all your own stuff, all your own emotions. Okay, so Don't humility blame is blame anybody out there. So humility is about self-examination. Self-examination. Is it not? Is yeah. that is yeah. that the case? Yeah. So so can you see? There is a big problem with the group down here, to be frank, that of, of a lack of self-examination. There is always a bit of finger pointing. There's a lot of finger pointing with your mediumship. There's a lot of finger pointing with the emotional side of things. And it's interesting that Peter, who has a passion for mediumship and who is volunteering his time to do it, obviously he knows he's not going to do it perfectly, but you're already finger pointing at Peter saying, oh, he's not doing it how I want him to do it, he's not doing it, and so forth. And this is where you've got to be very careful. What, I've, uh, what I feel we need to do first is examine ourselves, not Peter. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Peter needs to examine Peter. <laughs> we need to examine ourselves about what emotions we feel about that, about whatever Peter might do. So I feel the comment that there's a feeling that there is an inequality is, a, I feel, a, a, a valid comment because you can see when we have a group here, there is very much oftentimes a separation between the men and the women, right? And in fact, even some groups we have, you, there's almost a line you can draw down the middle and the men are on one side, the women are on the other side. So there was, is obviously a feeling of inequality between the men and the women. Does that make sense? So that is a valid comment. But, but I feel when we start getting, you know, Peter doesn't do this and Peter doesn't do that, you are now starting to get away from self-examination. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Um, but also, um, it's been Peter who's done all of the... Um, guiding of the spirits when other people have come up to channel and he's amazing at that yep. but I'm just just um, wondering if there's too much pressure on him to do all that because he is so good at it um, and and if other people maybe not um, can I be frank yeah. I feel that there is no one else in the group who's at a at a condition where they could do it actually with any con amount okay. of love okay. does that make sense and we'll discuss this in a minute um, but but uh, this is where you've also got to be careful. While Peter may not do it perfectly, um, he is in a good condition to assist because he has a love for them. Yeah, he's fantastic. So he has a he actually has a love for the spirits that are coming. He doesn't he doesn't have any other primary emotions with them. Although he is a bit afraid of the women spirits who come yeah. certainly, <laughs> and and that is an emotion that we've talked about with Peter. And there is a tendency as well, sometimes with the men's spirits, to not confront their true unhealed emotions because of a feeling that, you know, the women need to be confronted rather than the men. But, and these are things we have discussed, but, but the reality is inside of Peter, there is a large amount of love for the spirits, and this is why he's, enjoy he's doing it, even though at times he himself is quite frightened. Well, he's, he overcomes his fear. That love overcomes his fear when yeah. he's very frightened. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep, Matt, can we? I, I feel that um, there's, within the whole group, um, like at the beginning there was probably a bit of like homework kind of stuff going on. Yep. But I feel like there's been very little self-initiation in terms of actually engaging with spirits, um, uh, like, like wanting to develop our mediumship by ourselves and then just expecting that Angelo is going to say at the end of the meeting, oh, well, this week we should channel about this and channel about that and bring it back. Like, I guess I, for myself probably as well, like a feeling of wanting it to be served up on a platter. To so everyone sort of expecting Angelo to serve everything Yeah, and, and Peter through with yep. Angelo, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, could we go to Fab and then up to Louisa? I'm under the impression that isn't the learning centre a place 
to learn. Like, isn't that like, the, the, we're here to, to do? Like with me, like Peter's not perfect. No one is perfect in the group. Yeah. We all do have all these projections and not and this that and and that's probably what you're addressing. Is that we're here to learn? You know, because channeling or mediumship comes in different forms and shapes. So definitely not just sitting down. Just sitting down. Yeah. Yep. I so agree. like I always, because I didn't even think I was a channel until Pete said that I'm doing it in music. So yeah, when you're writing a song, song out, yeah, you're and it just comes and I've written it in five minutes. I didn't know that that's what <laughs> song, but that's yeah. what I was under the impression that's this learning process. So yep. I think you know, we, we like we said, we reflect, but I think it gets complicated too. Like you know, and yeah, and I guess as I was saying at the beginning, we're encouraging you all to reflect because that's a part of learning. Unless you're willing to self-reflect, then you're always relying on someone else to deliver your learning, as Matt was yeah. just saying. It's probably just because I'm, it moved. Did it? No, yeah. yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. yeah if we go, Eloise are up the back. And, then and there was a couple other people up the back who had their hand up before. I don't know. Was, was there a few up the back that had your hand up? Yeah. That we haven't? Yeah. Russell, Russell, Russell yeah. So we go there. Um, I feel that there's, amongst the group, um, with each other, um, <coughs> Some who in particular get the brunt end of it, but also the spirits, the real feeling of condescension at times. Um, Towards the spirits, you mean? Yeah, and yes. also to me to each other. other. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, condescension. Yeah. Russ? Yeah, I noticed um, sometimes when someone might be channeling, say, a really in, um, group, like a very large group of very angry women, yeah. that um, the, the group will start to try to drop off to go to sleep, or they'll they, um, it's like this fear comes at the, um, at whoever's being um, channeled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, or if it's not a fear being projected at them from the group, then it's a, an anger. Yeah. And, um, and like a, a bit of a put down on, on the spirit who's just, yep. yeah, being honest. Good. Okay. Peter, and if we come forward to Dave. The thing that Angelo always focuses me on is the actual spirit. So, like with the actual channeling, there's often times where there's so many blocks in the channeling. And he, so long as he's still able to connect with the spirit within that process, yeah. that's always the feeling I get from Angelo. It's about that is the most important thing in the whole yeah. interaction. Okay. Yeah. And Just two, two things. Um, when I've been on stage, I'm not sure, but I... I I think I've felt um, judgment from those in the audience. Yep. So if that's happening for me, you know, it's probably happening for others as well. Yep. But uh, something else too, it's, it's been a fantastic place to learn. Yep. Like some people who have, have thought that they couldn't channel end up on stage and away they go. Yep. And to me that's absolutely fantastic. Yep. And even for myself, the last couple of times I've been on stage recently, it's helped to engender a bit more confidence that I lost for a while. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's just a fantastic opportunity to learn. Yeah, we, we would uh, hate to see the group stop, to be frank, but, but we do need to make sure that it gets more into harmony. And we'll tell you why, because our spirit friends, um, your spirit friends actually, <laughs> um, are, uh, are concerned about the direction that the team is going at the, mo at the moment and they'd like to correct it so that it goes in the right direction. But um, so, so we certainly don't feel ourselves that we want it to, to cease, but there are growing addictions in yourselves as a group to the mediumship. And this is something that we want to also discuss with you um, tonight, tonight as to why these, growing, uh, these addictions are growing and what it get, helps you avoid. Does that make sense? So we'll talk a bit about that. And um, yes, up the... I just feel that um, I'd like to know how better to help the spirits that are being channeled. Yep. I just have a concern that we're perhaps not helping enough or that we're not doing it in the way that is most helpful to them. I'm not really sure because I don't really know how to do it. I'm very keen to know more about that aspect of channeling, whether I'm sitting in a chair, which I haven't done, but yep. just to, yeah, how to help them more. You know, they've come for help and that is what I felt was that the channeling was about. And yep. even though I'd like to sort of sit in the chair perhaps one day, yep. it would be t to assist them, but to just understand that process and do it better for them. Good. And yeah. um, how many of you who are, have come to the team regularly have actually, have actually channeled just for the purpose of helping the spirits only privately? How many of you have done that? Privately, what do you mean? Privately? In other words, with no one around you, 
Eat just by home. yourself in your own home, oh, you've attempted to channel to help a spirit privately. So that, that's lovely. So that, that's, yeah. a, that's a, a positive thing, yes? Mm -hmm. That's very good. Yep. So, uh, but how many of you feel a bit confused about how to help them? Do, do you feel there's a bit of confusion there? Some of you. Okay. Um, just someone at the back. I, I just find the whole being on stage just really confronting and I, I went up once and it was so confronting for me just to be up there. Yeah. I just felt terrible about what I did yeah. because it was just so about me yeah. mm -hmm. and I went home and I was just like that was really horrible yeah. and yeah. I felt so bad and you know I tried to talk to him, to this Michael later and I said oh, I just feel so bad, <laughs> I didn't help you because I was just so you know, uneasy about myself. And That's because you're so much in your own feelings of uh, yeah. being on show and, yeah. you know, wanting to avoid, you know, being on show and so yeah. forth. I, I think that's not a bad thing because in the end, the more you practice in front of a group, the less you worry about the group and the more you just worry about connecting with the spirit and accurately relaying the spirit's information. Yeah. So, I feel a lot of pressure to sort of do it a certain way though. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I feel... You know, to have them channel straight through is quite hard for me. Right. So when I'm doing it at home, I tend to go more on feelings and stuff like that. So I feel like I have to kind of put on a show if I get up there and I'm not ready to do that. So you feel like you have to give them a voice rather than say, what I feel yeah. from what now is this and what I feel from is this. And, and, and it feels like now that, yeah. And yeah. even having some somebody else who might be able to hear the spirit confirming or not yeah. that so, information yeah, would be helpful. I'm much more comfortable with, with that. So a bit more, you feel a bit more... Ex Open experimentation without formality would, I think so. would be beneficial. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if we come down to Laura. <coughs> I've got two things to say. First, um, I've, I've realised, uh, I've recognised um, a, a real shift in humility with Pete, and because. Um, I've seen him channeling with such humility. It's really helped inspire me to be a lot more humble and help them to the level that I can and then assist them to a high spirit. So yeah. I learn something all every single time that I go. Um, and there was one time um, that I was up there and it was projected from the audience. A lot I felt that this particular spirit was my son. Yeah. And I do not did not feel it. And I said, I don't feel it is my son. But it was almost like I was got in a very state of confusion because um, it felt like even Angelo was was suggesting that it was my son, and people in the audience were saying, "I feel it's your son," and I was like, "Do I doubt myself, or do I place trust in a celestial and others that are more mediumistic than me?" And I was left in quite a state of um, stress afterwards. And then Pete did call me the next day, and we chatted, and then I just came to the realization I'm just going to keep going back and trusting my own feeling, regardless of what's happening in the room because I have to keep trusting my own feelings. So Laura, would it be accurate to say then that you felt sort of pushed into a accepting something that you personally don't feel you could accept? Yeah, and then all night I was crying, feeling this sun, and then it just, it felt like, wait a minute, this didn't come from me, it didn't come from my own realisation, it was yeah. put onto me. Yeah. So I just had to dismiss it and just go, I'll wait until I'm in a state when I feel that it's true for me and it bubbles up in my own soul that yeah. I have a son. Yeah. And we'll talk a bit about that as well. Yeah. Um, you said you had two things, Laura. Oh, the Gosh, first Laura. one was the humility oh, right, yeah, Pete. Cool. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Alexis? Um, um, I'm, I'm feeling what Shelley said was true and, yeah. and that we're kind of almost getting stuck in a certain formula. Yep. Mm -hmm. Of like, okay, you know, you talk to the spirit and then, oh, the bright spirit comes down and then, okay, turn your brightness down. And, yeah. you know, it's... And I'm, um, I was just channeling, actually, on the way to here. Yep. And I, I was just going, you know, wouldn't a bright spirit know if it's too bright? <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, yeah. so like it just seemed like um, there was something about that just felt a little hokey. Well, what, like, what happens is some of you are just trying to copy what I've done to, with the Yeah, exactly. Not yeah. understanding that I can actually see what's going on. Yeah. And that's why I do what I do. And that's why what I do is very different with every spirit. Right. Does right, that right. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so anyway, there, I just feel like there's almost like a... A certain level of a formula. Yeah, 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 and there's certainly no good creating a formula, yeah. Matthew. Um, I, I guess, like as we've been talking, I've kind of realised that um, for myself and maybe for others that I'm pretty. Uh, you guys were kind of demonstrating the other day that, like, 
one person punches the other person and then the other person punches the other person yeah. and a lot of the time it's like oh the fucking spirits are doing stuff to me again yeah, uh, yeah. kind of thing yeah. and so we're like angry and hitting the spirits and they're hitting us and, yeah. Yeah. and then we rock up to mediumship and then it's supposed to be all about loving them and it's exactly. really critical actually so in the day-to-day life yeah. uh, are you really loving them? I'm not no, no. no. So, so that's a very good uh, that's a very good observation yeah, yeah. 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 you can't sort of manufacture love for them on one night and the rest of the time just be in a rage with them. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Put on the love face for mediumship. Yeah, love face for mediumship, yeah. Um, just on the note that it was brought up before, it's like um, with the, like when I'm helping spirits at home and I'm by myself, I'm speaking with emotion and passion in my own way that's connecting with them, but when I get on stage, it uh, definitely I didn't think about it before but it is a formula because we're scared of um the judgment of doing it our own way so there's this there's like, a lot of reasons not just okay, that way yeah. but um yeah it's the spontane the spontaneous desire to help in that moment is lost the yep. minute that I get on stage yeah plus plus there are a lot of personal addictions when you start getting in front of other people that come into play mm. and that of course mm. does modify quite severely um, whether you're in tune with the spirit or not. Because uh, if I'm now feeling my personal addictions when I'm in front of other people mm. and I'm hearing the spirit but I'm not actually feeling him, then, then, the, then I, I could even be saying something that's completely opposite to what the spirit feels mm. because I'm hooking into my own feelings and uh, feelings that I'm feeling from the audience and so forth. So it, it is quite a complex thing to actually channel in front of people mm. and, and it's great to experiment with it without uh, too much judgment, I feel. But, but there does need to be a correction of any unloving behaviour as well. And this is where our celestial spirit friends can assist through the process of talking through Angelo and saying, look, there is this part of it that's, that's you know, not, not, not in harmony with love and so forth, yeah. So, that, so, so what if someone on the mediumship, oh, sorry, what if someone on mediumship might went up there and just like, like Laura, for example, got her paper and drawing on the floor and started channeling and she started drawing and channeling like is that a way to experiment with your own mediumship like certainly but then you'd question well why do you have to do that in front of a group like obviously in front of a group the the mediumship is going to probably take more of the form of either feelings or a thoughts or discussion and mm -hmm. um, whereas when you're private mediumship you can it can take many different forms um, it can take poetry music you know, art, expression of emotions through those me mediums, all sorts of forms. But, but in a group like where you get together, obviously it's about learning how to do it more than it is about sort of doing it. Because mm. doing um, it can be done elsewhere. Yeah. So it wouldn't be wrong to discuss dis different ways that you can connect to mediumship. Because I couldn't do it like that sitting down and yeah. say I get this feeling, I, I get it by playing my guitar and something coming out of my mouth. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or writing a or song writing and all of a sudden all these... So that's the way I would do it, mm -hmm. but I don't feel I could like, know how, to, how I could learn more from the group in doing... In, in well, this is where some of the principles of mediumship need to be taught rather than the mediumship itself. Yeah. Does that make sense? So you, yeah. your experience could form a valuable thing to offer to the group and in the form of a discussion or you know okay. yeah. do you see in a way of opening people to different ways that mediumship is yeah. used and is valuable rather than getting and hung up on a certain type of or, or method and you could also be encouraged to experiment with your mediumship like okay when did it feel like i was really connected to my guides when i wrote that song how was i what was happening and those kinds of insights are very valuable to share with others as well can you see that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, uh, where do you want to get that? Oh, I just yeah, so. wondered if Peter, uh, you mentioned something to me about, um, it was just going back to someone, I think it was Alexis's comment about um, just the formula and stuff like that, and something that you said that Angelo had said about how he's working with spirits at the moment in the group because of certain conditions. Um. It's more like often our connection with the spirits gets lost very early on in the channeling and then and then it's like if he can connect them to the spirit world that 
that's as good as we can actually do it. And we're not able to actually have any long discussion with them. Yeah. Or yeah. We, this is something we also wanted to raise with the group that that if the group has has let's call them all of these like angers and fears and terrors and and all these emotions in the group that we have yet to release mm -hmm. and the spirits coming along have exactly the same groups of emotions you know towards men or towards women mm -hmm. angers or fears or griefs that they yet to release then how can anybody here actually help them mm -hmm. so really all you can do is ask for a bright spirit to come introduce him mm -hmm. to a bright spirit and then hopefully the bright spirit can help him does that make sense mm -hmm. what we need to do is get to the point where we can help them Right, because we can aid these spirits uh, quite markedly, but we have to be in a bit of better condition to do that. Mm -hmm. And this is some of the things that we'd like to discuss with you uh, tonight. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I've got two questions now. Um, so are we able to do that before, to be really effective helpers of the spirits before we become one with God? To effectively help a spirit you have to at least enter an engaged condition with the spirit. You have to at least understand them, not be condescending to them, not be angry with them, not be afraid of them, and actually have a feeling inside of you of love for them without pandering to their unhealed emotion. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, now, if you have all of those things happening, it doesn't matter what condition you're in, you can help a spirit. <laughs> do, do, we, do we not, um, though, always attract spirits with similar injuries and or complementary injuries? We do, however, uh, we have the ability still to be in the condition I just mentioned while we assist those particular spirits. And in fact, when you think about it, if we were truly connected with our own emotion, we would recognise a brother or a sister who comes to us with the same condition. You go, well, yeah, I have exactly the same problem as that, actually. Instead of going, well, you're, you know, you're this angry, you're that angry, and you're this and that. Instead of going, you, 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 you go, well, no, I'm in the same spot as you, actually. And, and yeah, I'm having just as much trouble as you are, actually, <laughs> and dealing with that emotion. Um, but this is what I've been told, um, and this is what I'm trying to put into practice. You know, like, so be more humble and honest mm. about, uh, you know, the assistance you're providing to them. I feel once you're humble, there's, a, there's so much more you can do to help another person, yeah. be they in spirit or yeah. in body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and my other question was, with a group, is the only purpose um, to learn about the mediumship, or are there other reasons to have a regular group? Well, with a large group of people. well, the whole purpose of the mediumship team is to learn. What we're trying to do in the team is to encourage each of you who have a passion in the area of mediumship to then go out and use that passion in a practical manner, in a loving manner, in your day-to-day -day life in all sorts of situations and areas. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so what we're trying to... Well, unfortunately, what finishes up happening is everyone then finishes up relying on the team time and then the rest of the time, instead of experimenting and, and, and going through this process of developing the mediumship and then helping, uh, helping spirits in particular uh, through your day-to-day -day interactions, a lot of times that's not actually happening. So, so what, what, we're, what the purpose of the team is, is to try to help you connect with your passion mm. and actually then engage that passion in your day-to-day -day life without needing anybody else in the team to share in the passion with you. Mm -hmm. Does that mean? So it's, a, it's a bit like the same with the arts team. What we, try, what we want to do with the arts team is the same kind of principle. Help you with your passion, connect to the passion, and then go out into the world like the general day-to-day -day life that you have with all sorts of people that you meet, you know, many of them not anywhere, uh, don't, don't, have never heard of the Divine Love Path or any of those things, and share this passion with the rest of the world in a passionate manner and with a manner that's more and more in harmony with love and service. Does that make sense? It that, is that, a that, service that, team. Yeah, so service. it's not just about learning. It's learning because we desire to serve. Yeah. 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 Now down the track, what we would really love to see is many of the people who are in the mediumship teams actually embracing the process of helping many, many spirits. But to do that, we have to help everyone in the team get into that condition that I mentioned before, where we don't have any fear, we, we don't have any anger, we don't, we're, we're not um, in agreement with them holding on to the emotion 
of shame or guilt or you know or separation between men and women even though we have the emotion inside of ourselves and that requires what uh, what is called integrity we're, in other words we're going to have to have much more integrity mm. with our mediumship far more integrity than the average person or medium on the planet actually has mm. does that make sense mm. so um would you like me to mention uh, what's, what Angelo and uh, some of the other spirits, celestial spirits who have been meeting with you feel about yeah, the room? Should, should we start with that? So what we'll first start with is, is Angelo and his comments uh, about how he feels everything's going. He feels that he's battling a very, very poor spiritual situation. And if he can explain to you the situation, it, it is like this. Often what happens is some uh, very dark spirits come along, attracted. Uh, a lot of times they've been attempted to be drawn here, drawn here by some celestial spirits to get some assistance. So the spirits come, but often the spirits are in more a state of more humility than most of the people who are here are in. In other words, the spirits are willing to discuss their personal emotional condition with a group of people more than each of you are willing to discuss your personal emotional condition mm. or even or even feel it and these spirits are willing to feel their personal emotional condition more than many of you in the group are willing to feel your own personal emotional condition now as a result of that what happens is the spirits are actually sometimes in better condition than the group is even though they need assistance do you understand? Mm -hmm. yep. So that, that's one issue that he would like to raise with you. You wanted to ask a question, Rita? Yeah. Um, I'm just not clear. Um, would, we be, would we know that we are not humble? Would I know that I'm not humble? No, most people who are not humble uh, uh, do not So know. I don't know, because I feel I'm not. Anyway, so I... Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Most people who are not humble do not know they're not humble. <laughs> yes. Um, and this is why our, your celestial friends want to help you see what's really going on, you see. So this is why they wanted to raise some of the things with you. Um, they feel, Angelo feels that uh, there is so much addictions being projected at him that if he continues doing what he's currently doing with your group, it won't be long before he will feel that he cannot do anything at all with the group. So unless the group changes soon, he feels personally that he will not be able to do much more with the group. And in fact, he, he, he's in fact beginning to feel that it's actually, he's just feeding the addictions of the group by doing mediumship with, through Peter with the group. Particularly um, about your personal emotions. Yeah, that's relating to so what you mentioned first up, Matt, about the taking feeling, you know, yeah. and there not being a strong sense of gratitude, like sincere gratitude. It's more of an expectation now that he deliver. And also he said that there's very little practical application of any of the advice that he gives. Does that make sense to many of you? <laughs> that's what he's saying. So he feels, the spirit, Angelo, feels... There is very little practical application of any of the advice that he personally gives to you when he's discussing your personal emotions. Um, one of the desires I just get from Angelo week after week is he wants them all to find their own Angelo, their own yes. guy with them. And it, that seems to be one thing that he's finding really yeah. difficult that I feel myself. Yeah. And that's something that he said, that because of this feeling of... Um, that the it's an expectation that um, that he should serve in this way. It actually limits the amount of other celestial spirits who are able to connect with people because there's a sen there's no sense of receiving the gift. Yeah. 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 He actually said that in some of the meetings you've had, there has been no other celestial spirit present aside from him because of because the the atmosphere just doesn't allow the spiritual atmosphere doesn't allow for another celestial spirit to even be present and it's even difficult for him to be present. So can you understand why it's difficult for them to be present? Because when a celestial spirit is very clear about not serving you in your addiction because that's going to take you further away from God. So he's walking a tightrope at the moment of bringing truth and trying to develop everyone in terms of their own self-reflection and moving towards love 
but he's also saying, well, I can't keep going too much because they, they're in addiction with me doing this and it's not actually changing their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can't, I don't want to lead them into addiction because he, he can't do that. Yeah. 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 He wanted to mention a few things for you, Pete. Uh, one was um, he feels that there's still a lack of openness of addressing truth in a, in a equal manner with males and females. Um, and both with males and females, there's an issue. And secondly, he felt that he, there is a desire in you sometimes to support their emotional addictions. And he, he can't fit, get drawn into that, uh, supporting the emotional addictions of the group. So he, he mentioned those things to us as well. So, um, so from Angelo's perspective, who, who's obviously with you, every single group that you have, he feels that he can't keep doing it as it currently stands too much longer without Damaging. everyone in the group having a good look at what's going on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that, that's number one. We'll talk about what he wanted you to look at in a minute. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, the other celestial spirits uh, who observe the, uh, the spiritual interaction. Now, probably what I would need to do here is give you a bit of a outline of how it looks for them. What, whenever any group of people get together, the, all of your emotions and all of your belief systems about yourselves and the spirits, so all of your emotions and all of your belief systems about both things, combine to form an atmosphere. Do you understand? So it's sort of like, imagine, imagine there's a smoke that, inter, that fills the room of a certain flavour when you all get together. Or colour. Or colour. Like. And it's actually got a colour. Unfortunately, there's not much colour coming from the group at the moment, but, but there's a flavour that, that is present. There's also an odour, a smell that comes from you as well. Do you, do you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. So this, com, this com, and it's the combined emotional condition, both the positives and the negatives. So it's not just the negatives, but it's the positives and the negatives that combine together emotionally and they form a colour, an atmosphere of, of a general feeling and also a smell, right? And that is what either attracts or repels different groups of spirits to come and join you. So, so what the higher celestial spirits would like to explain to you is that this atmosphere is present with you every time you get together. Now. If the atmosphere it, and it, that's present has a nice sweet odour and has a brighter, a bit more colourful, remember the colour we mentioned? Do you remember that colour? The, the corally pink mm -hmm. type, mm -hmm. actually very similar <laughs> to that colour, um, uh, type of colour. Um, that, 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 and, and this very much attracts any spirit, uh, whether they're a celestial spirit or a dark spirit, because they can feel that love and desire that, that is emanating from the group. If you can imagine like a cold night here in Kentucky, it's really cold and it's windy, night. misty. It's every night. Yeah, every actually. night. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't been the whole time. <laughs> it's been warm, maybe. Yeah. But if you imagine that, and you know what it's like if you build a big bonfire mm -hmm. in the middle of that. It's warm, it's glowing, and you want to go and... Be near it. You feel like you want to go there and put your back to it. Yeah. You want yourself up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And you can see it for miles around. If it's in the plains or the hills, you know, you can see, wow, there's this place where there's probably warmth and light. And that's what it's like when there's this really, um, this coral coloured atmosphere, if you like. It's like for a spirit. They can, they can sense that from a long way off and they know, wow, there's warmth and light there and it's very attractive. Mm. Yeah. Is there any questions about that that you have? Laura, you want to ask a question? I know. Um, I'm, I'm just noticing um, that when I'm driving on mediumship nights, at times I can feel um, very, very happy and light, and then as soon as I sit down within 10 minutes, I feel like not tired because I, I, I'm passionate about the group, but heavy. Like there's just, um, just this strong, like, cloak of blanket. And that. Um, and can I suggest to you? Because you're going to go in a totally different direction from that point onwards okay. that you need to go in. Can I suggest you to go in a different direction? Every time you feel that, that heavy atmosphere, you need to understand that the reason why you feel it is because of something in you that you're suppressing. Mm. Mm. In you that you're suppressing. Yeah. 
not mm. do, do you understand everyone mm. like when I'm with you I don't feel all depressed and down even if you feel depressed and down does that make sense yeah. mm. and if you feel like you're overcoated by some spirits when I'm with you I don't feel like I am like I can feel the resistance to it but I, I don't feel like I am so that's not what I that's not what you're talking about when you're saying there's like this colour that in the group that comes. Well, then, no, I am referring to that about that. But but you see, this is where we've got to be careful, because each of us need to personally reflect about what inside of me causes me to get all heavy and shut down. What inside of me is open to, or often it's not the openness, it's the closeness inside of yourself to the spirits who are coming. Now, if dark spirits are going to come to get help, naturally, you're going to feel some of their emotions. And if you shut down the feeling of their emotions, because you don't want to be recognised that some of those emotions are in you, then you will definitely get very heavy. Hmm. So is that why a lot of the earthbound spirits don't remember their death? Because it's an avoidance in me of looking at painful things and, and in them too yeah. and in them because a lot of them don't want to talk about how they died exactly There's always blockages exactly there. exactly yeah. and 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 really what's happening a lot is we are because of our own desire to shut down our oh, the realization that i've got the same emotion they have and wow i need to look at myself and wow i feel that now and wow you know like and and we try to shut that down we are actually encouraging while, while somebody's trying to talk to them to open up we ourselves in the group are shutting them down mm. we're actually encouraging them through our own attitude to shut them down mm. does that make sense yeah. to everyone we're, mm. we're at the feeling coming from us is no no shut up about that because you triggered me about that <laughs> or shut up about that i don't want to cry now you know like and and mm. those are the feelings we have mm -hmm. and as a result of the feelings we have we are, one person is trying to assist the spirit to open and the rest of the group is trying to assist the spirit to, at the same time and sometimes it's even the person who's trying to assist the spirit who's shutting down the spirit through that process so this is where we've got to be careful when we're talking about the general flavor what we're doing why we're talking about that is so that you can analyze your own partition participation in that flavor rather than to go there's a general problem with the group and a general problem with the spirits coming understand that every time you have that heavy feeling it's because you are avoiding something right mm -hmm. and 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 your avoidance is being triggered by something that they're projecting and you're shutting down and this is uh this is something we need to understand when we have spirits come to us and quite often we go, oh, that was really heavy that night. I don't know, Peter needs to fix that up or, you know, like something like that. Not realising that actually it was heavy because all of us were shutting down something while something was happening. And that's why it was heavy. And, that, and we felt the heaviness because we want to shut down. We don't want to know about that. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, Susan? Sue? Yes, I'd just like to comment on, um, I think, that deep desire to serve and also the deep desire to be connected to God um, walks hand in hand with all of this. Yep, I agree. We, what we'd like to do is comment about some of our Celestial Spirits' comments and then we'll give you far more detailed information about what they would like you as a group to examine. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So they would love you to build a campfire. <laughs> you know, a campfire that can be, and that they can stand around with you, that's going to attract spirits. But every time, as AJ was saying, about the suppression or the avoidance or the blaming or whatever, the campfire gets dimmed and dimmed and dimmed. And even though some of you have this desire inside of yourselves, every time you step aside from something that's triggered or you want to blame someone else or get irritable with the spirit or the channeler, it gets dimmed and dimmed. So. Mm -hmm. The, keep in mind while we give this feedback, some of it's quite specific and blunt, but it's all because these guys really want to help you build the campfire. Yeah. So, so their motive, like they wish for many, many of these teams around the earth to get established. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, because if they do, then we can have many people around the earth assisting like literally millions and millions of spirits over the course of, uh, of days and if, 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 these, if these spirits that are earthbound can be assisted, there's around 22 billion earthbound spirits at the moment who need assistance. 
But it, it would even be better if they could at least go into the spirit world, right? Mm -hmm. But they need assistance to do this, which means releasing them from their addictions. Mm -hmm. And when we are in so heavy addictions ourselves, wanting, <laughs> but then of course we're not going to help them release theirs. So, so we need to look at ourselves first before we can assist them. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Alexis, and then. Um, I'm just um, internally playing with this idea that um, obviously as we're channeling we get triggered yep. uh, because of our own stuff inside and then we start to, you know, I've, we need to feel this mm -hmm. uh, and acknowledge this and then I'm, I'm just kind of asking myself um, like where's that line of maintaining the contact versus of course focusing on our own stuff because I was just thinking, like Mary, like when Mary had channeled on last Sunday, Saturday, Saturday yep. you know, it her her own stuff overwhelmed her, and then she had to stop, which yep. is you know fine. Yep. And then I'm just trying to find where's that that line of like not becoming, you know, like self-serving or in that moment or. Well, what? Yeah. yeah well, I feel the example Mary gave Saturday was an excellent example yeah. because because. She started to get challenged by some of the things the Spirit was saying, yeah. uh, obviously because it connected with her personal life right, and so forth. Yeah, yeah. And so as soon as she started feeling that, she felt, no, I can't do this in front of the group. I've got to go now and deal with some of my own emotions. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, and that's okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel, because uh, I have, um, this has been a journey for me as well, this idea of when my emotions get triggered while I'm channeling. And it used to be, I used to think, okay, I'm triggered, this is good, I'll just have a cry and I'll just keep channeling. And I realised that was actually very selfish. So mm -hmm. at times when I'm channeling now, it will trigger something within me, but I can own that and keep serving the spirit. Do uh, you kind of lost me there. Because you said when you started crying, you felt that was very selfish. But on Saturday, if you're I, I'm not finished. Yeah, okay. I'm not so, finished. So let, 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 okay, let I'm me sorry, finish. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So there were times where I would make, I would keep channeling with AJ or a small group, and I would have be crying my own tears while relaying their message. And often it made, made the message very disjointed. It meant that um, yeah, the people around had to put up with Mary crying, with me crying, with and. You know, that's not loving. It's not loving to make you put up with my crying. You so, don't have to sit with me while I cry. So it's far better for Mary to stop, leave, and deal with her emotions. But now, there are, when I get triggered when I'm channeling, most often I'm able to own that emotion, so I'm not suppressing it. I'm just, I don't know how to describe that. I can acknowledge, yeah. okay, I'm really sad about this issue, but I desire to serve my brother or sister right. and yeah. continue. Yeah. Um, on Saturday, I felt, actually, I can't, I can't do this. Sorry, Rachel. I'm sorry, I can't serve you and the group right now. And, and I don't want to make everyone put up with me crying. Um, and so I, I made that decision. So can you see the distinction I'm making? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never yeah. loving to have yeah. my emotion while I, I'm not serving them if I'm using them to have my own emotion. Right. So either I own it. Or I go and continue okay. serving, or yeah. I say, sorry, I can't, I've got okay. to feel my emotions. Yeah, yeah, I was just trying yeah. to figure that out. Yes, yeah. yeah. yep. yep. that's good. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And can I complete our Celestial Friends' comments? Yeah. Um, nice. um, well, let's complete their observations, and then we'll talk about their comments. Shall we do that? Because I haven't even really begun with their comments yet. <laughs> um, we've talked about Angelo's feelings about the issue. Let's talk now about the other celestial spirits. What the other celestial spirits are, are feeling is that it's very, very hard for them to even be present, even when Angelo's present with the group, because of what's going on a lot of the time. So, so a lot of the time they have to sit back and just observe all of the addictions being fed between the spirits and yourselves and between each other. Um, and there's very little they can actually do to assist it because very few people, they feel, want to actually look at it emotionally. They feel they are in quite heavy addiction, most many of you are quite heavy addiction. So, so what they observe is that they have to step back and then they see this sort of cauldron of all sorts of emotions going burbling back and forth or mostly being denied or shut down uh, in many of the groups. And they sort of are feeling like, well, there's not much point in us being present uh, until something changes. 
Does that make sense? Until mm -hmm. something opens, until well, something Well, there's changes. very little way that they can connect and, unless to aid you in an addiction. Yeah. So what we would like to do now is discuss with you what they discussed with us as to what they felt were the two major problems. Can we do that? Yeah. And then uh, we can ask questions about access. You want to ask? Um, I wondered if... Thanks. I wondered if you could give an example of um, the addiction when someone's channeling and... We how will do so during the discussion of what they want to raise with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, the two issues are all are both issues of love, by the way. They are issues of love and humility, primarily. So we will talk about those issues. And um, they said that there's basically two primary subjects they would like to discuss with you. The first primary subject they wanted to discuss with you is that, is the attitude, the general attitude of self righteousness that is developing in people who think they now know the truth of the divine love path. So there's this, so, so that's the first one, the general attitude of self-righteousness. And the second issue they wanted to raise with you is the general attitude of selfishness that is starting to pervade or, or, or be pulled into the mediumship. So serving self. And serving self rather than serving others. If you others. think about it, you guys have already highlighted some of those themes, yeah. both of those themes. Mm. So let's uh, start with some of the comments they have and we'll try to give you some uh, practical examples as we go. And, and you may also think of some practical examples that you may want to ask about, so please feel free to share those. And they did say they would really love for you to ground this in practical examples. <laughs> so think about what does that mean? What are they saying? What would that look like? How has that happened? How can I relate? Think about what this really means in terms of practically doing mediumship, yep. not just as a concept or an idea. Yep. So the first thing with self-righteousness, they mentioned firstly that there is a general feeling of righteous anger in both the males and the females of the group. Now what they mean by righteous anger is that many of you feel at times when you get hurt or when you feel hurt that you are justified in becoming angry as a result of the hurt you feel. Mm. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. And now unfortunately you also feel justified at becoming angry with spirits who hurt you. Do you, do you get that one too? Many of you feel that with uh, people who come to influence you spiritually. Can you feel the anger sometimes you feel in return with those spirits? Like, feel like getting angry with them and telling them to pee off and, and all of those kind of things? And so they, they said that this anger, this self-righteous anger is happening between each other in the group, but it's also happening between yourselves and spirits. Right? So that's the first thing they would like to uh, raise with you. Do, do you notice that? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, have you got any ideas of practical examples where you've, exa where you've seen that occur? Yeah. Where you, Laura? Uh, within the mediumship team or within us personally? Uh, either. Um, I know that when I see someone um, being unjust to someone, I, uh, my heart just goes into this like rage ball. I get a hot heart yeah. and I really just want to say, how, how can you be unloving whereas I'm unloving? Right in that moment. So to you want them. to punish the person who's hurting the other person. Stop them. Or stop. stop. Yeah, I want to. I, I want them to know what they've done. But there's this just this hot, hot rage that comes out first. It's an actual. It's a heat in my heart that yeah. comes out. Yeah. And when I'm told to feel it and own it, yeah. I feel like I have to gag my soul and my heart because <laughs> yeah. I can't control the projection until I really start to go into the process. But it takes a while for it to stop wanting to go that way. And and do you understand and that's about it. your denial of your your own grief about being attacked? Yeah. 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 Matt? Um, I had the um, opportunity to channel a, uh, an, a, a woman spirit who had a lot of anger, yeah. um, Jesha, and I was pretty right, self-righteous, I think, at the beginning. Yeah. I guess what I realised, but I'm still not applying it all the time, um, like kind of demanding of them to do something emotionally yep. and they've had a far, far, far worse life than I have and yep. I'm not willing to do it myself. Right, yeah, yeah. so there's a, sort of almost a hypocriticalness in the whole interaction as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, Seth? Um, 
It's something you pointed out on Saturday in the last mediumship where I could s start to sense my great-grandfather. First time I could sort of feel that. And, yep. then, and then I said, oh, I felt like saying, oh, fuck off, grandpa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's this immediate anger and feeling righteous about it, feeling like, he, he shouldn't be with me. Why is he with me? Instead of going, why is he with me? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> there must be something in me that's got this attraction mm -hmm. to happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah. So can you see that one clear enough? Yeah. And yeah, just a little bit further to Matt's point about you were saying this person had a far worse life than me. Something that the Spirit said that these two issues, the self righteousness and the self servingness, means that most of you don't actually get to know the Spirit, really. Mm -hmm. You might hear a little bit of their story, but there's not a heart opening to the knowledge of their life. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of almost like somebody coming to speak with you and they've got to work their way through the barrier of your judgment, your condemnation of them, your condescension towards them, your, the fact that you don't even want to know anything about their life and why they feel like they feel and all of these things and we don't want to know any of those things but we're going to help them. Yeah. <laughs> and how can you help a person without sort of engaging a lot of these other things? It's not really possible if you think about it. And when so, we just say, I'll oh, just feel your emotions, that's a very offhand kind of a comment that does nothing to acknowledge mm -hmm. this whole person's history, what's happened to them, their whole, you yeah. Now when we're all celestial spirits, we'll be able to instantly read their entire history without them having to tell us any of it, and we'll be able to instantly uh, feel their emotions about their entire history without having to ask them anything about it, but do you know what? You'll still ask them, mm -hmm. and you'll still engage them so that they have the opportunity to tell you. And if you look at the book club that Mary's running, I think it was even this week, uh, chapter four, where, um, isn't it, where, um, no, no, sorry, I, I'm... you jumping ahead. I, I'm, I'm reading uh, The Gate of Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's in The Gate of Heaven, actually, about three quarters of the way through. Now that I think about it, but um, there's this... That's not for a year and a half, Not for a year and a half, yeah, but there's this example of uh, the, this celestial spirit who goes to the first sphere. He meets this guy who used to be a religious person on earth, and, and he doesn't just ream off to the religious person, you know, all of his stuff. He waits for the religious person to actually engage a process with him of explaining... Why have I got these raggedy clothes for? What's wrong with everything here? Are you the boss? Can I talk to someone who's the boss? This spirit was going and, and, and you know, the, the celestial spirit was very patient, very kind, very understanding. And in fact, one of the comments it says is that um, the words you would try the patience of a saint actually were applying right in this example. But um, it, it just gives you the example of once, even once we're a spirit who can actually see and actually feel every single thing about a person's life, we are still not going to be condescending with that. Mm. We're still going to be uh, in this personal engagement of getting to know the individual. Yep. And can you reflect on this in terms of your relationships with each other? <laughs> oh, you've just, that's your law of attraction. Oh, you've just got a feel about it. Oh, you're projecting. You know, all this stuff that's very offhand and does nothing to acknowledge with love the person in front of you. Imagine if AJ got up there in, in Secrets of the Universe. Right, all you are pretty, uh, you don't know anything. You, yeah, you're all projecting at me right now. You've uh, got a lot of issues in your childhood. You should really Half look at that. you're in a rage with me, so I'm not going to do yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> not so You've got to own that. It's all your law of attraction anyway. Right. You know. Wouldn't learn much in that process. <laughs> but that. some of you treat each other like that. Yeah. A lot are like that. Yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking, Mary, that the two issues you're talking about, about self-righteousness and self-servingness, are the two issues that are most prevalent that you've been talking about in the book club and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Is how we're treating our brothers and sisters. Yeah. And the community, not, at not just large. these brothers and at sisters, large. the larger community. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, many of us are even treating the community very badly, yeah. like like very judgmentally mm -hmm. and so forth. And of course there's going to be a backlash to that because yeah. it's an emotion mm -hmm. coming from us to the community. Of course there's going to be some kind of condemnation for that emotion coming back at us. It's just like, punch the community. What are the community going to do? Yeah. Punch your back. You know, that's the way it's going to work. But the same with families too. Like, I know in the beginning, you know, you learn a whole lot of new stuff and I know that I was coming from that place of self-righteousness and... Mm -hmm. And my son said to me, he said, you sound like you're preaching, yeah. you know, and, and so you have to 
get to a point where you can live it rather than... Yes. In fact, I was curious about in the spirit world, they preach through action. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Which, if you think about it, that's... Uh, I think I, I might have even said that in the book group last mm -hmm. week. Um, you know, if someone gets up in front of you and tells you the secrets of the universe and yet they leave none of it, how many people would you... How many mm -hmm. would listen to that? None, mm -hmm. because the real preaching is through acting, mm -hmm. and it's the same when our spirit friends come to us. Mm -hmm. We can tell them, "Oh, you gotta feel it's okay. There's a God and all of that." But if we're sitting there in all our anger and resistance, they can they're going to respond to that more than they're going to respond to the words that come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Today I was threatened with legal action mm -hmm. uh, about the pageant messages. And they told me that I have to cease and desist from, ex from ever referring to the pageant messages to support myself being Jesus. Oh, wow. Now, in the pageant messages, it actually says that every person on the planet has free will, including me. That includes me. So I'm allowed to do whatever I want, according to the pageant messages. <laughs> and, so, and so there is straight away a, a, a complete disharmony between the the mm -hmm. desire of the person to enter into legal action against me, <laughs> trying to control my behaviour. Mm -hmm. And so he, him, he himself is not applying the pageant messages that he own, feels he owns. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and when we do the same as that, can you understand there's never going to be a good result from that? Mm -hmm. We are personally being very hypocritical when we do that. So, so when we go into this righteous anger towards others, right, where we think we're right, and other people, other people we condemn as a result because we think we're right, just the anger itself indicates and betrays our true motives and condition. Mm -hmm. And this is what our spirit friends are saying, is that this, this causes us to believe that we are right, we're self-righteous, and, and instead of saying, well, wow, the fact that I'm angry already means that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, we have to feel our anger, sure, but, but we have to make sure we get to what, what the fears are and what the grief is underneath the anger rather than dumping it on somebody else. So this man, he's getting in a rage because um, the truths that we're spreading, this method is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, and he feels that uh, he, he wants to attack me for that. And, and in his self-righteous anger, away he goes and takes a certain decision. Which Now, if I did the same back, that would be a very, very damaging thing to do to my own soul, but also to him as my brother. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Does he blame you for his book sales increasing as well? Perhaps? Well, exactly. The book sales are increasing, <laughs> and, and yet, yeah. and yet, yes. So anyway, but that's a, that's a different matter. And and one of the things the pageant messages does say too yeah. that if something on the truth is it's actually growing. the truth on earth, it will grow, mm -hmm. and if something is actually the error on earth, it will die a natural death anyway. So if he truly practiced what he read in the messages, he wouldn't be worried about trying to kill something that's automatically going to die a natural death anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's all sorts of uh, uh, misunderstandings, of course, in the soul of the man about the, uh, his own messages that, or the messages that he's, he's reading. But what I'm illustrating from it is the fact that he's in this righteous anger. And righteous anger, while it might feel right in the moment that you engage it, it is definitely never going to be harmonious with love, or, and particularly with God. So we're already out of harmony. Let's go on to the next one. The next one the spirits mention is a, the feeling that you, many of you have already raised, the feeling of condescension mm. towards others or towards the spirits who come. Now, have you seen that in action at any time? Like I think, Matt, you mentioned it just earlier. But have, have you felt that at any time where, where a spirit comes and they seem in a very confused or very difficult state and many of you feel like, oh, I'm glad I'm not like that or, you know, you know wow, well, they're in a hard state, let's try to help them or, you know, that kind of feeling that comes out of you. Do you notice that feeling that comes out of you at times? Would anybody like to say anything about it? Matt, you want to? Yeah, um, I recently saw myself in the spirit world. Um, and so I feel like for myself it's pretty good to assume, don't just, don't assume that I'm in a better soul quality than the person I'm talking to, yep. even if they're in the hells. Yep. 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 Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, actually many times if we're honest with ourselves, instead of being condescending, we'd go, wow, yeah, I can see, 
this lady that I'm talking to, you know, so it might be a hurt lady who comes to speak, right? And this lady that I'm talking to, wow, yeah, she really is angry with men and she feels she has the right to be angry with men. And then you go, well, I'm angry with men and I feel like I have the right to be angry with men too, you know? Like, and, and then you start seeing, wow, like, I, I, if I'm honest, I can then say to her, wow, I can feel what you feel. And actually, I, I feel the same. I, I, so I don't know if I can really help you. We both need someone to help us, but this is what I've been told to how to work through that particular information so you can let them know at least what you've been told and and you can say and I know there is some bright spirits who might who have been through this so maybe we could ask them to come and give you some help if you'd like to receive their assistance but but you could also say to them I know that it's not right for us to have this righteous anger we, we need to get to the grief, you know, I, that's something I do know from my own experience that while the, I hold on to this righteous anger, then the grief's never going to be released and I'm never going to get anywhere with it. So, and I, and I know in my life I'm holding on to the anger and I know I'm not really getting anywhere, right? And so you can be very humble and admit your own state, does that make sense, to, mm -hmm. to the Spirit, and therefore have the ability to enter rapport and then maybe assist them through this honesty, mm -hmm. through this feeling of honesty. And can you see that immediately you, that you become humble, you start to live more of the truth that you're conveying? Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> so yes? Um, I just find like with my own processing, if I see myself not as the victim anymore but as the perpetrator, why do I want this? Why do I attract this? Yep. Why do I continue to do this? Yep. It's actually making a really big difference. It is a large change yeah, that we make when we do that. I agree. Yeah. Yep. 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 Laura? I was just going to say that when I um, am processing at home, I'm, I'm now always saying we because I'm recognising if they're there, it's totally because it's within me that's created the attraction and, and I need the help. And when I ask for the celestial to come, I always go through an emotional process together with the, with the spirit. So it's, it's, always, it's always becoming a we now. Yep, okay. Yeah. Um, that um, so, would you call pity uh, a condescending sort of... Uh, there's a difference between pity and compassion, isn't there? Compassion mm -hmm. is... Uh, it, and sympathy is a, far, if it is a far more loving emotion. Pity sometimes can be projected at a person with condescension. Mm -hmm. So, I pity you, yeah. you know, in that state, can be sometimes a very condescending position. Whereas having compassion and sympathy for a person is like feeling a sense of empathy and, and understanding for their, for their state. Every celestial spirit who comes to help a person in the hills, and there's literally millions of celestial spirits who spend a lot of their life helping people in the hills, um, goes to them from, from a condition of compassion and sympathy. Can I ask about sympathy? Yep. Um, so when um, someone's been through such a, a you know a life and you just feel sympathy for them, how much is it? Can it be a commiseration of um, like sometimes you go, oh that's horrible, but how much are you actually holding the spirit in the place of, vict uh, of victim? Like, is there a um, fine line? If you truly feel what their state is and you truly allow yourself to have sympathy for their state, you cannot hold them in that state. What you will do is you'll be honest about the state. So it's like, it's if you were slapped around by your mother as a child and abused by physically, and I said to you, oh, that wasn't so bad, then that, but that would, of course, make it difficult for you to process the emotion. Or if I said, oh, that was terrible, you should be really angry with your mother and, mm -hmm. and, and you should stay angry with her for the rest of your life, then that's also holding her. The and person. that's the commiseration that you were that's talking about? That's the commiseration, oh, okay. right? Mm -hmm. What we would want to do is have some sympathy for the fact that this person has been hit around from the time of a child, been violently abused, so therefore must have quite a lot of different emotions in them. Anger, fear, terror, all sorts of different emotions are going to be present in them that we can assist them with if we connect with them. But we won't be sympathetic to them holding on to the emotion. Do you see the difference? Yes. We, we, won't, we won't be encouraging them to stay in holding on to the fact that this thing is happening. If I end up crying because I can feel their pain and their torture of their life and I'm crying because I feel so... That's not commiserating with them. Well, whenever you're crying like that, you're not actually even... You're not even feeling their emotion anymore. Mm. Whose yeah. emotion are you feeling? My own. Yeah, your emotion of being attacked in your life. So, so in that moment, I would say to the Spirit, look, 
I've got some issues here that I need to just go away and cry with and, and maybe you need to cry too, like I'm crying about my issues, you know, mm -hmm. and let yourself, through your example, just show them what they need to do. This is, this is an important point that the, our spirit friends wanted to raise with you guys, and I just mentioned it briefly before we're out of turn, but when we, when, we, um, when we have a feeling inside of ourselves that I can't feel my own pain, and someone is in front of us in pain. In the same kind of pain. We can. It's like the difference between me going to AJ, oh my gosh, that was really hard for you. Wow. You shouldn't have to go through that. Mm -hmm. To saying, oh my gosh, that was really hard for you. But you know, the truth is, we're going to feel this and we'll be free of it. The, one is having integrity and honouring truth with compassion. And the other is saying, this is all too hard, and it's really bad for you, it's bad for me, you know? And very often we call that first thing loving them, but we're actually not. No, we're helping them stay. You know, not loving them. It's a, it's a really Can you see the difference? <laughs> well, they had it make it clearer. In, the, in, the, in, your, in that? Do you want Does this? it all come back to the humility? If we're really feeling ours, then it will come out naturally. No, it's, it's about a false belief inside of yourselves. Okay about feeling like pain is too hard to feel. So if and I feel have to do it. pain is too hard to feel and my own pain is too hard to feel and some things should never have to be felt, if that's what I feel, mm -hmm. and someone comes along to me and describes a life that's even worse than my own, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to say, you shouldn't have to feel. <laughs> you know, oh, the feeling coming out of me towards them is, wow, that's a really hard life. You should never have to feel about that. Now that is actually helping them to not feel about that and it's actually helping them to stay in a state that is quite harmful. Yeah? Is it? Change Which one is it? Me or? It's you. Yeah. It's me. And, and often this happens with the, ang the anger in the women who come. So there's a sense of, oh, but they've had a hard life, you know, we can see they're in a lot of pain. Yeah. And that's true. But the, the critical point is whether we want to just understand them and, and tacitly agree with them not having to deal with the emotion or whether we're going to be firm for truth, have that integrity inside of ourselves and in them, which is saying that, but by doing this, we're not, by holding on to this, we're never going to be able to love. Mm. Yeah. Okay, um, are we hearing me? Are we hearing me? No? I am definitely mic three, my mic three, yeah. and not getting anything. Sensitivity. No, the sensitivity is right. You might just need to turn, turn the amp up at the top, is it? Yeah, I do. Testing one, two, now you're getting? Yep. Okay, mm. that's probably a bit loud actually. Um, can we go on to the next one uh, that they mentioned with regard to the self-righteousness? They, they raise the issue of arrogance. And what they've raised is where we think we know the truth and so therefore we take certain actions and we treat people a certain way because we think we know the truth already and they don't. Right? And what they've said is they, that we are often very arrogant with each other mm. where we think we know and the other person doesn't know. Mm. And particularly if you're a medium, often you're doing this. When you're interacting or giving help to another person, you're thinking, I know what they're going, and really it's the Spirit telling you anyway, so you don't really know, but, but, but the, the Spirit is telling you what you know. But a lot of times you're going, no, I know how to deal with that. And you, you, well, what's wrong with you? Why can't you deal with that that way? And we've got we're quite a lot of arrogance towards people on earth. But we've also got quite a lot of arrogance with the spirits who come for assistance, right? So, and the arrogance is in three areas. We're arrogant with the dark spirits because we think we're better than them. We're arrogant with the natural love spirits because we think we're on the divine love path and isn't it wonderful that we know the truth and they don't. Mm. And we're arrogant even with our celestial friends because when they tell us something about ourselves emotionally, we go, no, I don't have that emotion. Mm. And we're arrogant with all of them. Can you see? Mm. And, they, uh, and they feel it's a major problem because it's stopping them from seeing any major changes occurring individually. And so therefore, how can they assist you? And how can they assist any spirits then that are with you? And the spirits who are in, who in darkness, of course, respond in anger to your arrogance. And the spirits in the natural love path 
respond in arrogance to your arrogance. Mm -hmm. So in other days they go, why would I want to come and talk with them for, you know, they're just a <laughs> bunch of people who don't know how to love and they don't, you know. And so can you see how it affects every, everyone who wants to come? And they, the Celestial's friend said also that most spirits who come to visit you actually have less arrogance than you have. Mm. Mm. Right? And these are even the dark ones who come to visit you. In fact, to come and visit you, they have to at least have mm. enough of an open heart to express what's happened in their life in mm. front of 50 people or 40 people or 30 people. You try doing that. You mm. try saying, yes, in my life I had 30 abortions. If you've had 30 abortions. <laughs> you, you try saying that yourself. Or you try saying, yes, you know, in my life I raped a woman in front of 30 people. Right? Or try saying, yeah, in my life I have felt a sexual attraction to children in front of people. Yeah. Or say, yeah, in my life, you know, I had five children and, you know, I beat four of them and one of them I showed favour to. And say that to 30 people. Now, many, many of you don't even feel open enough about your own injury to say any of those things. And then these spirits come and they say exactly those things to you. So already they have more openness than we have. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. by, by disclosing these things. So, so what our spirits are, friends are saying is that this attitude repels not only the dark spirits, but it repels any bright spirits on the natural love path who could learn, and also any celestial spirits from the group. So, so there's like, so the celestial spirits come and they say, yes, I would love to tell Rita about the fact that she's overcloaked most of the time. All right? That's what I'd love to tell her, which is a truth, by the way, Rita. Realizing. <laughs> um, so you've got you've got a group of spirits that overcloak you to make you feel really, really happy. And then when they can no longer maintain connection with you, then you've got a group of spirits that go into this mistrustful, suspicious, you know, sad and sad, a bit depressed place, at which you don't like very much and then go back to happy, right? But now, now that's a gift they could give to Rita, right? To, to tell her about that. So at least she becomes more aware, right? But, but if there's no medium to be able to communicate that to, because the medium's sitting there, you know, arrogantly thinking, or, or Ritu, it was less humble and, go, and goes, I don't want to accept that, you know, like, why, why should I accept that? No, that's only, that's only Peter's opinion, you know, it's, Peter's got that problem, you know, it's not me, you know, and, and so when, when, if Rita had those attitudes, <clears throat> then of course what would the celestial spirit do? If the celestial spirit feels that even before they begin, then, then there's not much of a chance for any true assistance to be given, can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so they also um, said that there's no desire to know, respect, and love your spirit visitors. Mm. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. to, a, to actually know them and respect them no matter how dark they are or how bright they are or what path they're on or what religion they're from or what race they are or any of the variables that we can imagine whether they're a woman or a man because that's also an issue um, that, that we still respect them we still respect that they've come and we still thank them for their presence even if their presence is quite heavy and, and uh, causes us to go a bit afraid or a bit, you know but we thank them and we respect the fact that they're there and we love them while they're there. Because if we love them while we're there, we have a chance to help them. Mm -hmm. right? If you don't love them while, you, while we're there, we have no chance to help them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah? So that was the general uh, summary. I've mentioned the other bits.